in this video, we're going to find out if we're given a vector and we don't know the uh, the unit vector form of it, how can we find the components of the vector um, if we know one or more of the angles that it makes with uh, the x or y axis? You can do it either way. I'm going to do it from the x axis here. So here's the situation. Uh, I've given you a vector a which makes an angle theta with the x-axis. And I've written down here the, uh, the unit vector form of it, which we've talked about in previous videos. If you haven't watched those videos, I would encourage you to go watch those now. But let's say that we don't know this form. Let's say that we're not given it, and we're not given the vector uh, on a nice sheet of graph paper like this, where we can just count over and, and construct that form just from inspection. How do we find out the x components of A? In other words, how, much, how do we find... Uh, how much of A is in the X direction? That's a strange way to say it, but that's what we're actually saying. You know, there's part of A that moves in the X direction, and there's part of A that moves in the Y direction. We've seen this when we talked about the algebraic form, right? We, we, we developed this language. It moves five units in the X and three units in the Y. So if I just want to peel off those components, given just the vector and the angle, how do I do it? <clears throat> well, let's start. Let me go to a fresh sheet. Let's start with our good old definitions from trig, the cosine of any angle theta, right, not just that angle theta that I drew on the previous page, but any angle theta, is defined, three lines means defined, if, you don't, if, if you've never seen that math symbol before. It's an equation, but it's an equation because we've made it so, we've defined it to be something. The cosine of any angle theta is equal to the adjacent side over the hypotenuse, right? We're given a right triangle, these are those appear in standard positions like this, and the angle theta is here, and this is my adjacent side, this is my opposite side, we're saying it's adjacent to the angle, opposite to the angle, and here's my hypotenuse. And so the cosine can be, is defined, not can be, it is defined as the adjacent side, the length of the adjacent side, over the length of the hypotenuse, and that is distinct for, um, for all angles, between 0 and pi. I'm sorry, between 0 and pi over 2. So, uh, this is our definition, and this is what you learn in trig or pre-cal. What most of us miss the first time around is that, in addition to being a definition, this is actually a solvable equation. Let me get rid of all this stuff. It's a solvable equation, right? I can solve this equation for the adjacent side. I can solve the equation for the hypotenuse. I can solve it uh, for theta, if I can take an inverse cosine of the adjacent over hypotenuse. So I can solve this equation for anything I want to. Uh, and in the case, it's going to be most useful to us. And let me go back and, and show you what I mean. Uh, you can see if I form a triangle here, if I form this triangle, that's a really bad line, but if I form that triangle, the vector that I've been given forms the hypotenuse. Now, I will say, in, in not, all, not in all situations will it form the hypotenuse, but in a lot of them it will. And even if it doesn't, the mechanisms we're developing here uh, will lead you to the right, the right method. So in this case, my vector is actually the hypotenuse. So if I go back now, uh, if I want to know how much this vector moves in the x direction, sorry, going <laughs> one more time, go back. Notice the x direction is going to be my adjacent side. Right? The x axis is adjacent to that angle theta. So if I want to know how much of this vector is in the x direction, that is, what is the x component in the, uh, of this vector? I just solve this for the adjacent side. And you, see, you can see what's happening. I'm going to cross multiply uh, the hypotenuse, or in better math language, I'm going to multiply both sides by the hypotenuse. And I get that the adjacent side, let me go to a different color there. The adjacent side is equal to the hypotenuse times the cosine of theta. I can do the same thing for the sine of theta, right? In that case, I get that the opposite side is equal to the hypotenuse times the sine of theta. If that's not immediately obvious to you, I'd invite you to write it down, write down the definition of sine, and just solve it for the opposite side. So, as long as I have the hypotenuse and the angle it makes with the x-axis, I can find the magnitudes of the adjacent, the lengths of the adjacent and opposite sides. I can also do this uh, if, if I have the angle it makes with the y-axis. It doesn't matter because I can always use geometry and trigonometry to figure out other angles. 
So let's go back and see how that works practically. Right? In this case, the role of the hypotenuse is being played by the magnitude of A. And what I want is the, um, the, the x component, so I can tell, which is my adjacent side. So I can say that um, A sub x, which is going to be the notation we're going to use for the x component of the A vector. A sub x is now equal to the magnitude of A. And I'm probably never going to write this in class explicitly because it takes a long time. That's actually what we're saying. The magnitude of the A vector. I'm probably going to write it just like this, which is pretty standard. Lots of people will write just the letter A with no uh, arrow or, or absolute magnitude symbols, no modulus symbols for the magnitude of A, the length of A. So I'm probably going to write it like that. But just so you know, that is shorthand for this, which is more rigorously mathematic. Well, more mathematically rigorous, I should say. All right. So it's going to be the, a, the x component of A is going to be the length of A times the cosine of theta. And that looks like this, right? It's a, it's a vector along the x-axis, which is exactly equal to um, the length of A in the x-direction, which is weird language. But all it is is this 5i. We've already developed the, uh, the mechanism to talk about that. So if I want the y component then, that's going to be this side here. So then I can write a sub y is equal to a sine of theta. Right? All right, I hope this makes sense. I'm going to, I'm going to erase what I have here for ax and ay in terms of theta and show it to you in terms of the other angle, which is here, which we'll call phi. So, if you, if you need to take a second to pause the video and look at this until you understand what's going on, that's fine. But for now, let me erase this. Well, I'll have to redraw my fee. Let me erase this. And now, go ahead and draw back in my component vectors. I know the x is going to look like this. The y is going to look like this. And then this then will be my angle phi. All right, now, from phi's perspective, the adjacent side is actually the y component, right? This is the adjacent side to phi, and now this is the opposite side to phi. So to characterize these, these sides in terms of phi, I would say that a sub y, which is the adjacent side to phi, so I'm going to go through the cosine, because cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, is now the magnitude of a times the cosine of phi. Remember what I found earlier, a sub y was equal to a times the sine of theta. Now it's a times the cosine of phi, and that should make some sense to you because the sine of theta is equal to the cosine of phi if theta and phi sum up to 90, 90 degrees, or, or pi over 2 if you want to do it that way. And they do, right? This is a right triangle. Uh, any triangle has to sum up to 180 degrees. I've got the 90 degrees here, which means that the other two angles have to sum up to 90 degrees. And so that works. The cosine of theta is equal to the sine of phi. All right. I can do a sub x the same way. The x side is now opposite to uh, the angle phi. So I can say this is a sine phi. All right. If all this is new to you, take 10 minutes. Write down these definitions. Draw yourself a picture of a triangle. Work through it a couple times. Once you do it a couple times, you don't even have to think about it. You just see the adjacent side and you go, ah, oh, it's a cosine. You see the opposite side. Oh, it's a sine. All right. See you in the next video.